Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a simple bird feeder. Well, bird feeders, in my opinion, are one of the most popular first projects for newcomer woodworkers. And it's a great one because there are so many different methods that you can utilize while making this. Now, this particular project takes half inch thick stock pretty much all the way through. So that's what you're going to need. And we're going to start off by making the base of our bird feeder. Now I know that I said the project was made out of half inch thick material, but truth be told, the platform of our base is actually one quarter of an inch thick. So I have a piece here, it is six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths square. And what I've done is I've taken some half inch thick walnut um, and I have cut it or ripped it to a width of one and one eighth of an inch. I have also three sixteenths of an inch up from the bottom. I have over at the table saw cut a one quarter inch wide by one quarter inch deep dado all the way along in my walnut pieces. So the very first thing we're going to do is over at the table saw, I'm going to use my miter fence and I am going to cut these pieces of walnut so that we can frame our base and form basically a perimeter fence all the way around our base piece. The next thing we want to do is concentrate on the front and rear walls of our bird feeder. And for that, we're going to use half inch thick stock. I'm using maple, but you can use whatever you want. Um, you're going to eventually need two pieces that are eight inches long. So this represents actually two pieces and it is three inches wide. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to mark a center line from end to end along our piece. Now from one end of our board, on that center line, right at the eight inch mark, we are going to place a little mark there. That will indicate the very top of our front panel. And using our combination square or a 45 square, whatever you have, we are going to place a line from the edge of our board so that it intersects that little tick at eight inches that we just made. Now you only have to do this once, right there. Now this line where your 45 meets with the edge of your board, that will be where your blade needs to strike on your table saw and we can set our stop block on our miter fence and use the miter fence to cut this at a 45 degree. We can then rotate it, flip it over to the other side and using the exact same setting on the stop fence, we will cut the other side as well, giving us a peak. And with those cut, we can take them over to the router table and using a thin straight bit, for me, I'm going to use a 332nd diameter straight bit. I'm going to route a dado, one eighth of an inch in from each edge on one face of the board, a dado up each side that is going to be a quarter of an inch deep and 332nds of an inch wide. So with those dados done, we now need to place a one inch radius or a two inch diameter uh, cutout down here for the feed, but we only want it to be three quarters of an inch tall. So what I'm going to do is on each of our pieces on our center line, starting from the bottom, I am going to mark a little tick mark here at one quarter of an inch just like that and another one on this piece. And now what we can do is we can use our opposite pieces for reference. So in other words, we'll just clamp this down here, just like this. Get them in there nice and snug. Now. Each one now becomes our center axis 
for our hole. So if we place our pivot point right here and draw our top radius with our compass set at a one inch radius, we get our two inch diameter circle, but it's only three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. And we will do the same thing with this one. All right, and we can take those over to the scroll saw now and cut those two out. Just like that. So the next thing that you're going to need is a couple pieces of clear plexi. Now these are 5 64ths of an inch thick. They measure two and a half inches wide and six and a half inches long. And they will actually sit in our 3 32nd wide dados that we routed into our uprights there. And that will become the body of our bird feeder. It gives a great opportunity to be able to see how much feed you have left in there. And it'll just be like that. So your dimensions, if your dados or whatever are a little bit off, we know that this is three inches wide. When it's all said and done, this should be three inches as well. So you can gauge that on how um, wide you cut your plexiglass. So in our front piece here, we are going to, from the top, right on the center line, we are going to measure down one and nine sixteenths of an inch. And right at that point, we are going to drill a half inch through hole. On our other piece, we are going to measure down one and nine sixteenths of an inch, same as we did on the inside edge. And from that point, we are going to drill a half inch diameter hole, but it will only be five sixteenths of an inch deep. So on our through half inch hole, I have marked here right in the middle, a three sixteenths of an inch wide marking, and it is five sixteenths of an inch long. I'm gonna cut that out of the scroll saw, and that will create basically a keyhole. And I'm gonna show you what that's for just a little later. So for now, what we can do is we can take all of our pieces, our base, our platform, and our two sides, and we can give them all a good sanding and then basically assemble them together. One thing I would suggest here in the base of your platform here, in these corners, I would suggest drilling a little drain hole in case it should get hit with rain. It's not going to fill up with water. Um, that way, of course, the water can drain out. So possibly a quarter inch hole in each one of these four corners. Uh, when we get this platform glued together, I'm gonna to show you how we're gonna mount our bird feeder body onto the platform. And now with this assembly all glued up, there's not much for us to do until the glue is completely dried. Um, quite simply, the frame at the bottom that goes around the platform is just held in place by a frame clamp glued at the 45s. And for these uprights, I glued them to the base platform here, but just as an added security to make it a little stronger, once I got it marked out and knew where I wanted it, I drilled very carefully four holes right at the corners of each one of these and glued in a 3 32nd diameter dowel to secure these pieces here in place so that they have a little more rigidity and they're not going to just break off or flop over. So we're gonna let this completely cure now. And um, I guess once that is done, there is still a few more pieces to make. So with everything dry, depending on how well you cleaned up your squeeze out, there may be a little bit of glue residue down in the base of your dados on your upright pieces that is going to stop your plexiglass from sliding down flush with your platform. So just ensure that both of your plexiglass pieces still slide in all the way to the base. And if not, you can trim it out with an X-Acto knife down in there, get that glue out and make sure that these sit flush. 
So the next piece that we need is a half inch thick piece of, in my case, maple. It measures two inches wide by two and a half inches long. And on the two and a half inch side, I want to chamfer this at 45 degrees on both edges here. Um, and that will be the ramp for our food to slide down into our openings. And you can just glue that in place, making sure that it does not interfere with your plexiglass sides. Well, the next pieces that we're going to need will be the gussets for the roof. And what I have is a couple pieces of walnut. They're half an inch thick, two and a quarter inches wide, and two and a half inches long. And the first thing we need to do is place a center mark on one edge of our boards. And at the miter box, we're going to cut a 45 degree angle from that center mark down on both corners of each one of our gusset pieces. So with those pieces cut, you now want to verify some measurements. And what you want to do is make sure what the center mark is on the holes that we drilled in our original uprights. Transfer that same center mark onto your board, but then from the tip, come down 1 32nd of an inch more than what those ones are and drill a half inch through hole in both pieces. Now, do you remember our 3 16 wide by 5 16 long keyhole notch that we put in our uprights? Well, pick one of your two gussets and we're gonna do the exact same thing right on that center line on one of the pieces. And when you get your keyhole done, it should look something like this. So you can give both of these pieces a good sanding and then we can move on. Well, what I have is the main panels of the roof and I'm using some 3-8 thick stock. Um, this is maple. It's six by six inches. And what I have done is on one end, I have over at the table saw, I have cut this to a 45 degree angle. And this is going to make up our roof. So what we want to do is glue this together so that we end up with a 90 degree to make our peaked roof. And our gussets are going to get glued in place. We will glue them in here so that the edge is two and one sixteenth of an inch in from each of the ends of our board, just like this. And we will glue them in place and let that completely set up. And at this point, we can put this aside, let it completely cure, and we can move on to the last piece, which is the key that holds the roof on. So for the top of the key, I have this half inch thick piece of walnut and I've cut it into a triangle with 45 degree angles at the top and it is one inch tall. On the back, I have drilled in the middle a half inch diameter hole that is five sixteenths of an inch deep. You want to take a piece of half inch diameter dowel. And what we're going to do, this is four and one eighth of an inch long. We are going to glue this into our hole that we drilled in our triangle and we'll let that set up. And then there's one little small thing left to do in order to get our key to be finished. Well, our key is dry and what you want to do at this point is slide it in until it fully seats in place. Now we're going to take a scrap of half inch stock and place it here against our front uh, upright and we're going to place a mark on the dowel of our key. That mark is going to represent the edge of a 1 8 diameter hole. So what you want to do is 1 16th of an inch over from this hole, we are going to drill on a 45, so right down through on a 45 degree, we're going to drill a through 1 8th diameter hole. And with that hole drilled, we will glue in a 1 8th diameter dowel and allow it to protrude 1 quarter of an inch out the opposite side. So the dowel itself 
will be three quarters of an inch long. Just like that. So we'll clean up the squeeze out and sand that flush and that is our key done. Well, with all the pieces dry, let me just show you the final assembly. So we will place in our two pieces of plexiglass into the dados. They will not get glued in as it'll make it a lot easier if you need to get in here to clean this out. Um, you're really going to appreciate being able just to pull this out and have full access to the inside. So that will go like that. Our lid or our roof is dry. The keyhole will go to the front against the same side as our keyhole here, and that will just sit in place like that. Our key will be inserted with our little 1 8 pin facing up. You will place it through. It'll slide right in there like that, and you will turn it to match the peak of the roof. With that now, your roof is secured on there. This key won't pull out unless you rotate it, and that would be your bird feeder complete. Now, for me, these, I made them for years, and these used to be pole mounted. Um, you can always put a hook up here and hang it from a tree if you like. For me, I like to have these pole mounted. So for that, if you want to pole mount it, here on the bottom, I would place a square, glue a square of three quarter inch thick material right there. And what I put is a pipe flange. And if you're not sure what a pipe flange is, it looks just like this. And once you get that on there, then you can screw a piece of black iron pipe onto this or screw your bird feeder onto the black iron pipe and just pound it into the ground. And it's a great way to display your bird feeder and have the birds come to your yard. So there you go, a nice little bird feeder, nice access to see how much feed is in your feeder. And uh, well, you know what, it's just a great little beginner project. And there you have it, a bird feeder. Guys, as I said at the beginning of this video, bird feeders, bird houses, that sort of thing, they are absolutely perfect for the beginner woodworker. There are plenty of processes, the dados, there is the ripping, cross-cutting, there is cutting at miters, there is placing together miters and being able to miter a frame. There's framework there around the bottom. So if you can make this project, you can make picture frames. There is a lot of basic joinery and a lot of basic techniques that go into this project. Drilling the center of a dowel, measuring, marking, drilling. Like there is so much here to offer from this project and it is a wonderful one for the weekend warriors. Those guys or girls that like to go out just on the weekends to their shed and tinker around with a few little projects. This is a wonderful weekend project and it would look great in your yard. Not to mention you get a chance to feed the birds. Guys, I made these for years, years and years I made these and I never once ever made them out of walnut. I never once made them out of maple. They were always made from shelving pine from your big box store because they see a lot of abuse from the outdoors. So I didn't really want to put the extra money into it, let's say, to give them up with uh, more expensive woods, only to be weathered and worn and destroyed by the sun over time. But if you want to make it out of pine, I'm telling you, it works just as well and looks just as good. The other big modification from this one, from my original ones from years ago, is that they never used to have plexiglass sides. They were a solid cylinder with a window to show you the, um, the, the, the feed level. But I found with that, it was impossible to clean them out. Uh, it caused quite a few problems and I really didn't like that. So on today's show, I actually modified my original ones that I used to make to provide us with both a great visual for the level of feed and as well a wonderful way to clean out the feeder should things get gummed up because eventually what happens is water does get inside there and gum up the feed at the bottom and it can prevent it from coming out into the tray for the birds. 
Either way, guys, this is a wonderful project for any skill level. It's a load of fun and it looks great. Just put a varnish on it, uh, a spar varnish for outside sort of thing. And you know what? Let it weather naturally and let the birds enjoy it and enjoy watching the birds. It's a win-win for the birds. It's a win for you. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. There is one more thing that I will say about this bird feeder. There is one piece that I added and that is just below our half inch holes in our, up, in our uprights. Uh, I added one little maple, or sorry, one little walnut piece one half inch by five eighths of an inch by two and a half inches long and I glued that in place just as an upper support for those walls. It's optional, you don't have to do it, but I, I wanted a little extra support at the top. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. I hope you've enjoyed the content I've brought to you and I hope you've enjoyed the project. I really hope you're gonna try this for yourself and more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.